What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the sport of mixed martial arts. Today we get to talk to Giga Chikatsi, who's getting down on December 16th, right here in Las Vegas, against Josh Emmett, another badass. Welcome back to Junkie Radio. Giga, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, man. Thank you for asking. Uh, this is an awesome fight, you know, and it's two different two different paths that you guys are on. For example, you're coming off a win and you had obviously corrected uh, a loss in your last fight. You hadn't lost like in five years. And so you're kind of on a different trajectory. Josh in 2023 has lost two fights, two high profile fights. And he's obviously looking to avoid an 0-3 in 2023. What's what do you think is the important thing here before we get into the physical aspect mentally between two fighters that are on different paths? Is that a big deal, Giga? You think? Um, I mean, for for me, I don't really pay attention where he's coming from because I know he's a top ten fighter. He's a very high level athlete, and I know that I have to be ready for my opponents. The best uh, option best version so yeah so i'm coming from the win but um yeah all this doesn't matter for me it's really important fight on the table for me and uh, that's pretty much would you almost say that maybe the mental game would affect younger and less experienced fighters and like you noted because you guys are high level, high ranked, you've been in big fights, maybe it's easier to shake that shake that off and it's not as much of a worry for the top level fighters. I think so, yeah, definitely. It's uh, uh all that type of things I overcome for a long time ago because I've been fighting for since I was a little kid. And uh, yeah, it's just about uh preparation. Uh staying uh healthy uh, before the fight have a game plan and go from there december 16th what would you say is your goal aside from winning because with the winning comes money you're a prize fighter mm -hmm. but are there any other goals that the fans the media they don't even know about that maybe you're focused in that you want to accomplish on december 16th oh i don't oh, definitely the money for sure it's always good to get it but i'm not fighting only for the money here I'm, I'm fighting to reach my goal to become a champion from georgia to make my people proud make my community proud you know so it's been a dream for me for all my life and that's why i'm inside the ufc in the best organization to become the best fighter and uh one of those days when I retired, tell my kids, grandkids, that that guy was a giga back in the day. So, yeah. So to you, it doesn't matter how the win comes. It doesn't have to be a, a, a KO. It doesn't have to be a submission. It can be a decision. Like the, the goal is just the win. Is, uh... Uh, n not really. I always uh, looking for the knockouts in the fight. Mm -hmm. That's uh, That's what I enjoy to make that happen and also uh, that's well, what I'm known for. I'm a yeah. knockout artist and um, every single time I step in the octagon, that's what I'm trying to make it happen. But at the same time, the win is the most important in this fight. He's very experienced. He fought for title. Everybody who beat him, they fought for titles or fighting for titles. So I know on this fight stands a lot so i gotta win uh, anything it takes it I'll, I'll take it you know any type of win so i don't want to harp on this point but there is we know about giga time all right <laughs> and for example those three fights that you had before cater i mean you were destructive and there's like this big emphasis there's this big oomph you know when when you win like that and it seems to carry momentum. It charges you up the rankings and stuff. So I wanted to ask you, I know it's never a 
it's never a bad thing to win by decision. But for someone like you that can be so destructive, is there ever like a a letdown because it went to a decision versus an emphatic finish? That that happened once to me when I fought Omar Morales because I knocked him down in the third round, well, like right before, minute before or minute and a half before. And then I was upset I couldn't finish this guy because I did I did everything, but uh, the guy was tough. Then we heard that I broke his leg in the fight, he stayed in the fight. I knocked him down, he stand up, and he still was coming strong. It's uh, this uh, UFC and uh, the fights are really interesting. You know, people fighting for their dreams, some people fighting for their lives, some people for the money. So, yeah, you, you, sometimes you just cannot finish the guys, you know. Let's say yeah. even the cater fight, uh, till the last second I was standing uh, on the feet and I was, I was still dangerous. Yeah, I lost the fight, but, you know, the... I'm proud to keep 25 minutes till the last second like uh, to go. You know, I, I was always dangerous in this fight. So I know how the some of the fights can go from other side, not from from not only from the dominant way, but you know, like sometimes, um, yeah, weird fighters and this interesting sport. So, yeah, Giga. History has shown us that you can go on these incredible runs of victory after victory. Um, you know, after this fight here, it would be two. What do you think would be the main difference in the way you feel or the way you are mentally in this run compared to the last one? Um, last run, uh, I'm sure you're talking about after I lost the contender series, I was on. Nine win streaks till I lost with Cater, probably, right? So uh, that was more like uh, I was doing a little baby steps to establish myself and uh, <clears throat> slowly to move forward. Now I believe uh, I'm already on top of the hill, very close to, to reach my goals. So uh, I don't think it's going to take a long for me to get the strip and um, uh, right right now I have a great fight to make my dreams come true and step in the title talk again. So first thing first and then let's see what happens, you know. Yeah, every time I lost my fights then I came back much stronger and I don't think this time is going to be another as well. Iga, do you think... Um in this particular part of your of your career do you ever feel like uh the changes are they small little changes or have you ever had the opportunity to some fighters say i have to go back and reinvent myself are the changes for you from fight to fight small or have you ever had really big ones uh, after i lost the fight i i made a lot of big uh, changes all the time you know so uh, if you guys can see the, like, my debut in MMA was lost. Then I won my five fights because I was doing a lot of jiu-jitsu and wrestling and I changed the whole style. Uh, but at the same time, I was a kickboxer bef before I was in UFC. Then I got the chance in Contender Series, lost the fight. Uh, then uh, I went back to my roots and changed my style. I started to more like use footwork from karate background, and then I had the great run. So after the cater fight, I think uh, I didn't make a lot of changes after cater fight. Uh, it just was a lot of emotional aspect was really uh, made a big I impact uh, on my fight. But in general, even after that fight, you can see when I fought Alex Kasur, it's a lot of patient I work on my fight. And um, we'll see what happens now. But, um, you know, the Alex and uh, Josh are totally different style fighters, uh, different body type. So we'll see, because I don't think it's going to be the similar fight now. You know, when we uh, when we first started covering the sport, there were 
a few dominant countries, right? But as yeah. time has gone by, some of these countries are starting to really grow in mixed martial arts. The other day, uh, Peru got their first champion, and, and you see the fighters coming out of Georgia, Ecuador, right? What would you say in your home country is the one thing that all the fighters have that is very similar, something within themselves? Huh? Um, definitely. I'm so proud of that, that all the Georgians making it on top. And you guys can see that whoever inside the UFC Georgia and now everybody there fights the big fights, like Roman fights main event, Marab fights main event, Ilias fighting that for title. Uh, my fight is coming up soon in the uh, Kuram Kutateladze who who only has a couple of fights. Every time he fought, he, he showed up like either with fight of the night bonuses or something really incredible fights. I'm really proud of all, all of us, honestly, because we all uh, have this experience of the, um, uh, the p time we passed in 90s. You know, the, this gave us a different mindset, different motivation. Anything is possible uh, as a human being, if you dream and if you work hard and all of us, all of us, we've done with the very, very hard work. So um, one thing we have a similar is like we, we're not quitters, you know. When we have a dream, we work hard, we deserve it, and then we get it. Is it friendly? Is it a friendly rivalry between the Georgia fighters to see who can be the first champion or anything <laughs> like that? I mean, that's a definitely a lot of... Uh, a lot of a good uh, challenge, you know. I, it's you can ch you call it challenge, but there's in realistic uh, in reality, it's not a challenge. We just want someone to be to have a first champion, and we all want to be a champion. You know, nobody wants to be like just number two guy inside UFC or in the life, right? We're trying mm -hmm. to be the best, what I what we can be. So. Yeah, a little bit. There's nothing like serious about it, but yeah, definitely we want to be our best. Did you ever see when Brandon Marino won the title? Did you ever see Yair, Yair Rodriguez's reaction? Fellow Mexican, he was in the front row. He was going thought, nuts when yeah, Brandon yeah. won it. Did you ever see that? Of course, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Is that kind of how you would feel towards a fellow Georgian? Like, is it that kind of support that you have for each other? I guess? For sure, of course, man. It's a dream. It looks, uh, Georgia is such a small country. Of course, yeah. if we have a, uh, if we have a chance, like, to get a title fight and a champion to become, that's a huge, you know. Besides me being the athlete, I'm still a Georgian guy uh, from the one of the three and a half million people, you know. So, yeah. I'm what would it be like yeah. if you won a title and go back to Georgia? What would the reception be like? Does it reach presidential levels, like something like that? Oh, for sure. For sure. I already hang out with the premier, minister, prime minister, president, all those guys. Yeah, of course. And imagine how the, we bring it to the titles, like the belt there. It's going to be the line of the people of thousands and thousands of people just to come and see and touch the belt, you know. It's like crazy. Is MMA the most popular sport or is there soccer or anything else that's maybe just as or more So popular? soccer's been always the most popular sport and the yeah. COVID time, we broke everything. So we were the, the best uh, sports, athletes. I became the athlete of the year at the time in 2021. So definitely a lot, lot, lot. And uh, then we got a new star in a soccer. His name is Quaratschelia, the kid who plays in uh, Italy, one of the uh -huh. team. And then they took he took over again. So soccer, I believe, one of the... Uh, either soccer and MMA, the, the, we're running the things. Very cool. Lastly, uh, we're probably a, a year late in congratulating you here, but the mm -hmm. Boris Griffin Community Award that you won in 2022, um, what has that meant to you? 
in the past year? I know on that night you spoke and you told us, right? But since then, it's been some time, and I'm sure others have heard of it. Many people are proud, but can you give us maybe any reactions you've had from either your country, your family and friends, what it meant to them, and or, or just what, what it feels like, you know, uh, a year later, I guess? Uh, yeah, it's, it's that's such a feeling that, you know, the, I got this trust from UFC just to give me that type of Edwards standing on a Hall of Fame ceremony with Khabib and DC and Cub. Yeah. Uh, that that that's these names, man, are the, the legends of the sport forever. And me standing there giving in a speech, um it, it worth it worth it all the work I've done in my life, you know. And um yeah, till today I I walk differently today, you know, I live, I wake up differently because I know that even even what I've done already in the sports, uh, I'm really proud with that. And uh, the main, one of the main thing I've done is that day, bro, the, the, the last year, July, uh, that was like something that really changed a lot in my life. Mm -hmm as a human being, as an athlete, and as everything. Right. Well, congratulations. That's tremendous. Um, and, you know, by coincidence, Forrest Griffin's also from Georgia. Okay. What? Except the, the state of Georgia in the United States. Oh. Yeah. I was so, like, wow. Well, by coincidence, well. same spelling, just different location. But oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's funny that when we came all the anybody from Georgia when we were traveling and uh, coming in US if we would say that oh I'm from Georgia uh, everyone would think that oh why do you have such accents you don't sound like <laughs> Atlanta guy uh, but uh, now nowadays after we as fighters becoming in a big right. control, now they, they recognize our flag now people know that there is a Georgia, you know, the country, tough people. So I'm really proud with all this happening. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, thanks for making time for us here. I know these are critical days. These are probably the hard sparring days as you prepare for December 16th. Huge fight versus Josh Emmett. So thank you so much for squeezing us in your, in your heavy schedule. Always great to talk to you and see you. And uh, the best of luck with the rest of your camp, your weight cut, and, of course, on December 16th at UFC 296. Thank you very much.